All right, so I've just downloaded and uh, set up my uh, Kubernetes cluster uh, using this uh, Vagrant guide from the uh, Kubernetes repository in GitHub. Um, I followed these steps uh, to get uh, the latest Kubernetes installed, and same here below. Uh, I got it up and running. Uh, and right now I'm using this version. So it's 14, uh, 0.14.1 for both the client and the server. I also have a um, couple of minions running right now in my cluster. Uh, and those are their IP addresses. Uh, those will be uh, important in a bit. Uh, if we look over here, um, I have um, a bunch of um, pods running, uh, controller, and services. I'm gonna go ahead and kill those. Um, we need to uh, start from scratch. So I'm just gonna say uh, stop file for sample v1. That's v1, right? Yes, it is. Okay, I should kill uh, a bunch of stuff. Let me start from scratch. In case you're wondering, the command that I'm running here is actually I'm just using the the watch command, right? Uh, watch command, you know, refreshes uh, or re-executes a, 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 a one or more commands uh, within a given amount of time, uh, given an uh, interval. So right now I'm just saying watch, uh, and then passing in the command that I wanted to uh, execute, which is in this case. Uh, get pods echo so to provide a space between this and the next command which is uh, get replication controllers another space uh, get services all right so and we're not going to specify the interval so it's by default uh, two seconds right so now run that command and we can see that we don't have any pods running we don't have any controllers and there are just two services um, this one is, these are created by Kubernetes uh, by default. Uh, these, I think, are the services that lead to or that uh, redirect to the, the API and the uh, master. Uh, so this is, uh, this leads to the Kubernetes API, and this one is the read-only version of that. I don't fully understand that yet, but um, there you have it. All right. So now I am going to uh, create um, or deploy my application. My application happens to be uh, defined here, so there's version one and then version two. We'll go with version one for now, uh, and then you know, uh, and then uh, use the rolling update uh, feature of Kubernetes to upgrade it to uh, version two. So version one, uh, first of all, has a Redis master. This is taken directly from um, the uh, guestbook uh, sample. Uh, we don't have a Redis slave, uh, just a Redis master for now. That'll do for this demo. Uh, and then the Redis master, we put a service in front of it, uh, and uh, uh, the front end will use uh, this service to connect to the Redis master. And the front end, uh, we define it as a replication controller. Version 1 uh, creates just one replica of the front end pod uh, that we're going to deploy. And the, the specification of our pod is here. So the containers in this pod is just one. Uh, we're going to name it Kuber sample. Uh, and the uh, Docker container that it's going to use is uh, one that I made, Relax Diego Kuber sample uh, with a tag of V1. Um, and so this is taken directly from the uh, public Docker uh, image repository. Of course, you could you know, configure Kubernetes to get it from your uh, private repository if you, if you want that. Uh, but yeah, for the purpose of this uh, uh, of this demo, we'll just use a public repository. Uh, I'm gonna pass in a command to it, which is you know run the Ruby uh, binary in it, and then passing in an argument or a path to my Sinatra application, right? Which I think is the next killer app, by the way. Yes. Uh, and then uh, in front of our front end controller, haha. Uh, sorry, uh, we're going to. Uh, create a service for our front end. Um, in this case, we're going to say, you know, expo expose port 8080 and point that to uh, port 4567 of our front end uh, pod. Uh, we're also going to say, 
one of its public IPs is 10.24513. That happens to be um, the IP address of one of the minions. Um, if you if you look at this one, uh, get minions uh, 10.24513. Uh, we could add you know more public IPs as many as there are minions actually. Um, but let's just use 1.3 because I'm going to show you something cool uh, later on. All right, so let's deploy this, baby. Uh, what I'm going to do then is say create and say just, you know, pick up all the files in the v1 directory. And there you have it. The uh, service is created. The controller is created. And it's just deployed. Um, the front end pod and the Redis master, All right? That's pretty fast. Um, now this is this went very fast because the the Docker containers or the Docker images that were needed have been pre-downloaded. Um, but if it's the first time for you to run your Docker uh, container, and if it was you know a bunch of images, a bunch of large images, then it'll probably this will probably stay in uh, pending for some time. Uh, until all the images are downloaded. Um, there is a way to pre-download the uh, images, like, uh, you know, you, one way could be just, you know, just uh, SSH into the minions and then do a Docker run, and that way you'll see an, an interactive, you know, uh, a screen. Well, not really interactive, but, you know, right in your face, an interact uh, a, a, a status of, you know, the downloading status of uh, the Docker images. I'm not sure if there's any other way to do that, but yeah, there could be. I'm, I'm just not aware of it right now. Uh, you could also uh, use the get events command to see if any of your containers, you know, failed to download and run. Uh, this should give you, you know, some errors over here, like uh, image not found or something like that. All right. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to try and resize our front end controller. So right now, our front end controller. Uh, has a replica of one, and you know the the uh, corresponding pod for that is uh, this one over here, right? Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to use the uh, resize feature, which I, I still don't uh, memorize, ha haven't memorized right now. So we're just gonna say uh, resize uh, replicas, uh, the number of replicas, right? And then we'll we'll point it to uh, the replication controller, which is in this case front end dash version one. So we'll say, um, what's that again? Yeah, <laughs> my memory is really bad. Okay, replicas equals two, right? And then the replication controller is front end dash v1, right? And that says resized, and we're going to see uh, another one over here uh, being deployed. So now we have uh, two front ends. Uh, one is in the first minion, and the other one is in the second minion, right? And uh, as I mentioned earlier, or as I pointed out earlier, the, the IP address, the public IP of our front end service is 10.2.5.1.3, port 8080. So let's go ahead and uh, let's uh, visit that page. See if our application is deployed. 80. Uh, crickets. Don't embarrass me, baby. All right, there you have it. There is my application. Oh, I'm gonna leave a message here. So this Sinatra application is using the Redis master uh, for storing data, storing and retrieving data. Uh, it takes a while to respond because uh, I don't have a, you know, very beefy machine over here. Really, it's an old MacBook Pro. Um, all right. So what we're going to do is let's see if we can reduce the uh, number of replicas to one, and hopefully the the one that gets retained is the uh, the one in 1024 1.4. Thought we we're going to try again. Okay. Let's see. Come on. Come on. Ah. Okay. Now I wanted. I wanted the pod in 1.3 because uh, I think it's important. Uh, 
let's see. Let's. Okay, so we have one dot four. Okay, and then we're we gonna resize that back to dot one. I mean, to just one replica. All right. Okay. All right. So our front end now is uh, deployed. The only pod that we have is in the other um, host, in the other minion. All right. But if we refresh this guy over here, it should still work, even though the public IP uh, it, that we're pointing to is 1.3, right? Let's see how that goes. Yes, yes, it works. Uh, it's just taking a while for the image to download. All right. Uh, what the? So um, you might be wondering why why is it still working when you know this the IP that we're pointing to is not the IP where our pod the, our one and only pod is deployed um, and what's happening here is uh, the minions are actually acting like a you know a, a distributed logical switch or that's the only uh, that's the only uh, thing that I can think of right now um, you know that. So each minion knows where every pod is deployed in the cluster, right? Mainly because they're using etcd, uh, where you know, which is a distributed key value store. Uh, so that means you know, any member of that key value store of that etcd cluster knows about you know every single data. Um, now, if we try and um, SSH to, uh, so what's happening here is uh, we point to. Uh, 10.245.1.3, right, to try and access our application. And then 1.3, you know, knows about uh, the public IP and, you know, which which uh, service it's, uh, um, which service it's uh, uh, associated with. And then, you know, it, it just knows that uh, the, the pod that happens to be associated with that service resides in 1.4, so it just redirects uh, that immediately to 1.4. That is how I uh, understand it. Um, so if we look at uh, minion one over here, um, uh, <laughs> hopefully I know what I'm going to look for. All right. Um, so yeah, we have this um, uh, I, a rule over here: ten two four five one dot three, uh, and it says to redirect to port three three four four. Um, and all of this stuff, right? All of these uh, IP tables are uh, automatically configured by uh, the Kubernetes agent in the minion, and the Kubernetes agent bases the configuration on what it sees from um, the etcd um, data store that you know the whole cluster is using. So the, the, this whole thing is magical to me. I don't fully understand it yet, but I think it's a you know a very cool implementation. All right. So what else are we gonna do? Okay, so now we see that you know our application is running, you know, uh, but we don't quite like the version uh, of the application. We decide, okay, we're gonna you know add some um, CSS goodness to our application, and now we're ready to deploy the next version. And the next version is defined by uh, uh, this baby over here, front end controller version two, uh, front end ver controller version two. Uh, is by default it uses two replicas, right? Uh, and it now uses Relax Diego Kuber sample version two. Uh, and this image or this tag of the uh, Docker image happens to be pointing to an updated um, uh, part of our source code. Now you will notice that you know uh, uh, so far we haven't, sh I haven't shown you the process of building the Docker container. And that's because that's actually outside the scope of Kubernetes. I think that's a great way to do it because, you know, you don't want to be a monolithic uh, project that is involved in uh, process scheduling and involved in building the image. I think this is a better way of, you know, uh, making sure that Kubernetes is as laser focused in the features that it's trying to provide to its users. Okay, enough of that. Let us uh, do a rolling update of our application. So rolling update then, this is how you would run it. Here's an example. So you say uh, rolling update the name of uh, the controller that you want to update and then 
you know, which uh, manifest or uh, uh, replication controller manifest you want to use for the rolling update, right? So we're going to say uh, back here, right? We want to update our front end controller front end v1. So we say front end uh, v1, and then we point to the new replication controller manifest, right? Which is in Kuber sample v2 front end controller v2 and the, what you're gonna see here is oh uh, I forgot we should be providing an update period too so I'm, I'm gonna add an update period here which basically means you know we want it to wait like this many seconds between updating pods all right so we're gonna give it a, a, a space of 10 seconds all right uh, you guys ready? Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, here we go. All right, so now we see the replication controller version two is up and it's also deployed a new uh, a container and it's pending right now. There we go. Uh, it, went, it was pending for a few seconds because you know it's downloading the latest um, uh, image. Uh, and it's killed version one and it's now creating the second uh, pod and done. All right. Uh, we're still waiting for this guy uh, to be up and running, and there we go. All right, and if we refresh this page, we should see our new application or a new version of our application. Again, apologies for the uh, slowness. I will make sure to buy a more beefy workstation uh, soon. Almost there. Let's go. There we go. Ah, prettier. More web 2.0-ish. And our data is still there. Yes. Yes? No? Come on. So much time for a woot. Or woot. There's our woot. Right? Yes. All right, thank you.